David Dietz is here. David Dietz standing by, Managing Principal, Senior Portfolio Strategist at PPAC Private Wealth Management. Thank you so much for being here. So Friday, I mean, I feel like we have to go back to Friday. It was a market holiday. And that's when we got in PCE and Jay Powell spoke. And where do you feel that uh, Powell is on the cuts now, well, especially after seeing the PCE, their favorite indicator? Yeah, I mean, the takeaway from Powell's talk on Friday was we're in no rush to do anything. Right. But in no way did he say there weren't, wouldn't be rate cuts coming, just no rush. The PCE X food and energy came exactly on the on the buttons, 2.8% year over year. Right. So we're definitely still making progress. I think the big problem was today's manufacturing number, which, you know, good news should be good news, right. but the markets today are taking good news as bad news. For the first time in 16 months, we're seeing menu, pace of manufacturing pick up, so that's now back in expansion mode and of course the prices paid also moved up but you know the fact of the matter is the prices paid index is not nearly as important as the Fed's favored inflation gauge to PCE right and and so the interpretation here with today's manufacturing number because we did see that expansion it hits the highest growth in 18 months basically um, and so that was pretty fast and it was um, showing some clear signs of improvement and then people think that the cuts push back or push off right I mean that's basically the way and that's why we're seeing the Dow down 285 points pretty much absolutely so we saw the Fed fund futures yeah. that had predicted a 70 percent chance of a rate cut in June briefly now it got back down to 50 percent I think it's since drifted up a little bit. And right. now for the first time, we're actually seeing the total number of basis point cuts just to be 65%, which is actually below the recently reaffirmed Fed dot plot of three cuts, 75 right. basis points. So it's kind of uh, interesting. But, I mean, Nicole, let's put this into context. We just had the best first quarter since, what, 2019. Yes. You know, we're up over Pretty 10%. Amazing. We can't do 10% each quarter. So if there's ever a day for some traders to come come in and do a little profit taking, it was today. The other thing, of course, volumes are less. Most of Europe and some of Asia is off today, yes. Easter Monday. And so I think I that's going to that. create more volatility. Yeah, I saw that. Um, that being said, you have um, some sectors that you like, small caps, international, emerging markets, financials, real estate. Do you like all of those? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I think the broader market really has gotten some mojo. Uh, we actually saw the, the uh, equal weighted S&P 500 actually perform much better than expected. Uh, and, and, you know, and it back ended in the quarter a little bit. So we still think small caps are trading at cheaper valuations than large caps. But historically, they trade at a premium and they offer better growth. Of course, a lot is contingent on us staying out of a recession. But when you have great manufacturing, uh, better than expected, manufacturing numbers we did today that suggest a recession's nowhere close. So at this point now, I'd like to get to your pick so folks have uh, some time to comb through these. Um, you have BHP as uh, one of the picks. Why this name? So commodities, I think, are an area that's been so overlooked by investors. In terms of valuation relative to stocks, commodities are uh, cheaper than they've been since before 1970. Um, institutional investors are very underweighted in terms of commodities. Um, and so that any kind of momentum there, I think, would cause the institutional investors to back up uh, the truck. And of course, uh, commodities did poorly in this first quarter. So what I've done is gone for the granddaddy of all the commodity producers. That would be BHP. It is headquartered in London, but the ADR is trade regularly here. So why do I like it? You're getting a dividend of over 5%. That's nearly four times on the S&P 500. They're trading at about 12 times earnings versus 21 on the S&P 500. People say, well, commodities never work. Right. Since the start of this century, um, BHP is up fourfold, has done better than the S&P 500. But this, this year is down about 20% you know, versus up on 10%. So I think this is a good entry point. All right, you also have Verizon and Boeing. I want to leave time for Boeing, but touch on Verizon first. We'll make sure well, Boeing, the one, the, the hold off that people have to wait. Uh, I mean, again, Verizon is a market leader, certainly in survey after survey. The service is provided to the Verizon wireless yeah. uh, consumer, for example, uh, always outpaces that of AT&T. So wh what do I think going on? Right now, you've got a 6.3% dividend. It's a bond surrogate. But right now, with interest rates so high, you don't need that. But if interest rates, in fact, 
to start to come down as the Fed and Fed fund futures seem to predict. I think people are going to gravitate back into these high yielding right. uh, dividend plays. Meanwhile, of course, there is going to be a lot more phones bought that are going to be AI capable that may provide an additional wind in Verizon's um, uh, sales, of course. And of course, their competitor, AT&T, had some problems with holding on to the data of customers. That, too, may provide a little short-term push into the Verizon by many mobile phone users. We talked about over 70 million people um, with a data breach on AT&T today. That stock was down about 1% when I checked last. Um, good, I'm glad you brought that up. Last but not least, Boeing, which every day seems to get another headline. I think there was something in Minnesota today, an emergency um, landing. I'll double check that fact, but it was something like that. And so the whole point is that, uh, yeah, Minnesota worsens turbulent trajectory, emergency landing. I don't know. It's just like every day you get a Boeing headline. And another drip came out today where, uh, you know, United was talking about having to lay off yes. uh, pilots because they're not getting the planes from Boeing. But, you know, perversely, I actually think that's going to help Boeing. Why? Because right now they're under a cap in terms of how many planes they can produce. Now, of course, you have pilots, unionized people who yeah. are um, now no longer having work. You talk about pressure on the FAA to take another to look at that cap. Right. So those airplanes come off the assembly lines and allow these poor that unionized people to right? go back to work. Absolutely. Again, you know, it's a duopoly, Boeing and Airbus. It's at 189. Where do you think this stock could go? Well, you know, <laughs> a few years ago, it was over 400. If it only gets a third of the way back there over the next two years, it's a home run, I think, relative to a very highly yeah. valued S&P 500 at around 21 times earnings. Yeah. All right. A believer in Boeing. Here he is. But it might pull back more than you buy more, or what do you do? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. the other thing, of course, is we're going to have a change at the top. Right now, people don't yeah, know who Calhoun's that person is. The current uh, CEO, Calhoun, says he's going to be there for a year. Yeah. But guess what? If they get the right guy at the right time, they're going to make that change immediately. You can see a strong pop in the stock right there. Yeah, actually, make a good point. As soon as they have somebody, I bet you they announce it. David Deeds, great to see you. PPAC Private Wealth Management. David Deeds, thank you for being with us.